David Brewster here, Level 3 for All. This is 3 Jeff Labar Licks from 1987. And I'm sure most people watching this uh, you know, kind of felt the same way that I did last night when I saw the news about Jeff's passing. You know, it's very sad. And it just kind of struck me, you know, kind of funny where I thought, whoa. And it took me back in time. And I definitely remembered, you know, when I was a kid. And I was really young. And I had just kind of started playing guitar. And, of course, Van Halen, you know, and sparked my uh, interest in playing guitar. But I saw Cinderella in concert, and I was really young, and I did look through my ticket stub, you know, collection, and I couldn't find the, the ticket stub, and I have lost, you know, some of my concert stubs, you know, from over the years, especially the early days when I was just a kid. I didn't really think to keep, you know, the stubs. But I definitely remember standing in the crowd, and I was right in front of Jeff Labar's side, I guess it was stage right. And I was right in front of him. And all I remember, it's very fuzzy. I don't even remember who the headliner was. I just remember seeing Cinderella and it blew my mind. You know, I just saw hair and saw him running around, you know, playing a Kramer guitar, just completely, you know, rocking out. It was very, you know, full of energy, very sweaty, you know, rocking out big time. And I remember it gave me this impression where I thought, you know what? I think I want to do this. I want to play in a band. And I remember at that young age, standing there watching Cinderella rock, and I was just completely blown away. And when I heard the news, you know, about Jeff passing, it took me right back to, you know, being in the crowd, watching him like a hawk. And I was just mesmerized. You know, I thought, wow, I want to do this. I want to play in a band. I'm going to really take the guitar seriously. And Cinderella and Jeff Labar definitely basically put that in my mind and motivated and inspired me to become a musician. I did put together a Cinderella chord play, I think that was last year, where we looked at some other chord work, and now we're going to look at some of Jeff's, you know, lead guitar licks and techniques. And I did find, you know, a Cinderella concert, it was in Tokyo, Japan in 1987, and he did, you know, a solo, you know, by himself. Tom Kiefer also did a solo. You know, they were very different. You know, Tom's was kind of bluesier, and Jeff's is very exotic. He's actually, you know, diving into harmonic minor and Phrygian dominant and doing some really interesting things that kind of caught me off guard when I found this footage. I thought, hey, I didn't realize, you know, Jeff was playing like that back then. And, of course, they kind of moved toward, a, you know, more of a blues rock style, but it is really interesting to hear these kind of dark harmonic minor and Phrygian dominant ideas from Jeff. But the solo itself is really interesting. In the very beginning, there's like the synth kind of pad or these strings, you know, from a keyboard. And there's fog in the fog machine. The lights are really low. And Jeff literally crawls out, you know, on stage and then looks out in the audience. Almost like he's, you know, it's like some kind of science fiction, like sci-fi thing or something. Really cool. But check this clip out of like the beginning of the solo. Just wanted to give you a heads up again that this lesson's a little bit out of tune. It's somewhere between standard tuning and a half step down. It's almost right in the middle of a half step down and standard tuning. So it's not quite E flat, but it's also not quite E either. So I don't know what happened. More than likely Cinderella was in tune when they performed, but I think the transfer, like maybe from VHS to digital or whatever, may have you know changed the speed ever so slightly which would have caused, you know, the, the tuning to kind of sag or drop just a little bit. But just a heads up, we're out of tune here. The first look from the solo is this really interesting uh, idea. It starts with E harmonic minor implied, and then he starts doing this neighbor tone kind of shifting thing near the end. Really cool, like this. <laughs> Right there he does like a pick slide and then he starts you know in open position like this and then that little move right there that kind of shift slide is how he's kind of moving you know between different positions so in the very beginning he's doing this and then right there when you 
you slide that E to F sharp, then grab this G and slide F sharp to G, and then A, and then slide this G to A, and then B, and then right there you're going to start doing neighbor tone. So that first part. neighbor tones. So it's E to D sharp, and this G to F sharp. And then you're going to shift up and grab C to B, and then E to D sharp. And then right here, grab G and F sharp. And he's kind of ending on that F sharp. That's such a cool lick, and I love the way it moves, you know, between different positions, and then it ends with that kind of unusual, you know, neighbor tone idea. So cool. <laughs> a little bit slower so you can maybe see what's going on there. Something like that. The next looks really interesting and we're moving between two different positions and we're still flirting with this E harmonic minor and B Phrygian dominant idea. And it kind of gradually gets a little faster, uh, like the second time. Something like this. <laughs> starts right here, you know, we're kind of targeting that B right there, so that is kind of targeting like B Phrygian dominant. And then you're going to shift down here on the B string and answer that with like that. So you've got this, and then you answer it with this, and do that first lick again. And then the second time you're doing, you're kind of ending on that B note. And then you're going to do that again and do it a little bit faster the second time. And then of course he keeps going, you know, during the solo. But I really like that phrasing and I like that kind of shifting, you know, between positions like that. Okay, next up we've got an accelerando phrase where he starts really slow and then he starts going faster and faster. And in the beginning he's alternate picking everything and palm muting, you know, really heavy. And then as he gets faster he starts to lift, you know, the palm mute, or he kind of releases the palm mute. And he starts doing more legato, kind of half and half picking. But something like this. <laughs> you know, kind of repetitive pattern. I mean, it's a six note grouping, but it's four different notes. This B, C, D sharp, and E. And he's palm muting in the beginning really heavy. in there too. Cool lick and I love those accelerando phrases. They really kind of push your technique.
Here's a bonus lick from this footage, and it's a tapped lick, which you may not really think of tapping when you think of Cinderella, but lo and behold, here's Jeff Labar, you know, doing some tapping in 1987. And he's still flirting with uh, this E harmonic minor and B Phrygian dominant kind of, you know, back and forth kind of tonality shift, but something like this. <laughs> left hand, the fret hand's basically grabbing F sharp, G, and A right there. And then your tapping hand, or you know, your right hand's gonna tap C, D sharp, and E back and forth. So you're kind of, you know, moving between those three notes like this. He basically starts slowing down and he ends up on this B like this. And he basically taps that B, releases to that F sharp, and just kind of sustains that F sharp note at the end like this. That's a really interesting tapped phrase, and I like the variety of notes, you know, with the, uh, the tapping hand or the right hand like that. You know, I almost didn't put this together, and I thought about it, and you know, last night when I went to bed, I wasn't going to do this. And then when I woke up this morning, that first cup of coffee, and I looked at the clips that I found, you know, last night and started thinking about it. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the news about his passing, it took me right back to my pre-teenage years, you know, seeing Cinderella in concert. And it, like I said earlier, just blew my mind, you know, and it basically confirmed that I wanted to do this. You know, I wanted to play in a band and play guitar and, uh, you know, I really got serious, you know, and that was kind of one of those early moments that really pushed me, you know, toward music and the guitar. So for that, I'm grateful. And that, honestly, is why I put this together. Just, you know, out of respect and remembering him and remembering, you know, that concert, you know, it was very influential and important for me. And I'm sure a lot of viewers out there have your own stories, you know, when you saw Cinderella or heard them or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's such a shame. So rest in peace, Jeff Labar. And please leave some feedback and comments, subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.